Okay, so we've been looking at motion. We've looked at accelerated motion. We've looked at objects moving with a constant velocity where there's zero acceleration. So now we're going to look at like the cause. All right, what causes things to move the way they move? Okay, and so we're going to be looking at in this unit forces and Newton's laws of motion. Okay, today we're going to focus on the different types of forces, free body diagrams, and what that means. Okay, so here we have two types of forces. We have contact forces where there actually has to be like physical contact between two objects. And then we have what's called field forces. Field forces, okay? So um, there's a lot more contact than field. But for our contact forces, we have uh, the normal force. We'll talk more about these in detail here in just a minute, which we call Fn. We've got tension, which you could call Ft or big T there. We've got the applied force here, the applied force, which is probably what you think of when you think of a force. Uh, so sometimes that's just called Fa. And then we've got friction, which we call FF, or you can even call it little f. Okay, I've seen it both ways. And then we've got field forces, which don't require physical contact, okay? And so these forces, and we'll look at some more of these later, but the big one that we're going to focus on is the gravitational force. You don't have to be touching the earth in order to have that gravitational force pulling down on you, okay? There doesn't have to be contact between you and the earth. So that's a field force. Um, another one is the magnetic. So this is magnetic forces. Uh, this is the gravitational force. And then also we have electric forces. Electric forces are also considered field forces. The main one that we're going to be focusing on right now is the gravitational force. We'll look at magnetic and electric forces next nine weeks, okay? All right, so we've got contact forces and we have field forces. So here with contact, there has to be physical contact in order for these forces to be present. Um, with field forces, no physical contact is needed. So now let's look at the uh, different types of contact forces in more detail. So let's start with the normal force. Now, if you remember in um, math, the word normal is a perpendicular line to some other line, okay? So with the normal force, there has to be a surface present, okay? And so uh, there has to be a surface, and the normal force is going to be perpendicular to that surface, Okay, so if you're talking about a box sitting on the ground, let's say the ground is level, all right, there, the ground is pushing up on the box, that would be the normal force, okay? So there's a surface, and that surface is supporting. So when you think of surface, think of a supporting force, that surface supporting that box, and so that surface is pushing up on that box, so that is the normal force. And notice this normal force is perpendicular to the surface, okay? Now, I know that you probably have all done wall sits at some point in your life. So here you are, um, and I'm a I'm a horrible artist, but here you are doing your wall, your wall sit, right? 
okay? Now, if you're doing a wall sit, there's actually two surfaces here, and your back here, your back is up against the wall, okay? I didn't draw that very well. So we've got two forces. We've got the force of the ground that's up on you. That's the normal force. But then we have this perpendicular wall or this vertical wall, and that's actually also supporting you. And so that would also be supplying a normal force. Notice the normal force is perpendicular. So this normal force here, this one right here, is perpendicular to the floor. And then this normal force here is perpendicular to the wall. Okay, So in that case, there are two surfaces. Um, and both surfaces are, in a sense, supporting you, Okay, pushing against you. Um, and so there are two normal forces. Now let's say that we have an incline plane. And let's say we have a box. And again, there's physical contact between these surfaces and the objects. Physical contact. These are contact forces. So we have a box sitting on an incline plane, and it's at rest, okay? And so there has to be, and again, this is like a surface, but notice this surface is no longer flat. And so the normal force here has to be perpendicular to that surface. Okay, so the normal force, there has to be a surface. Um, it supports the object, and the normal force is perpendicular to that surface. Okay, so there's some several examples of uh, the normal force. And then the next force that we looked at was tension. Tension, which you can call FT or big T there. So the tension is um, present when you have a rope, a cord, a string, a chain, some kind of material, all right? So rope, cord, string, it's supporting, it's another supporting force, okay? Uh, the rope, the cord, the string have to be taut, all right, which means there has to be some tension, all right, in that rope, cord, string, um, and it's a supporting force, but it's along that rope, cord, string. So, like, if we have, um, let's say, a sign, here's the ceiling, we have a sign hanging from the ceiling, and this is rope, We'll say this is a rope, okay? There is tension in that rope, okay? And that, and that rope is supporting the sign's weight or mass, okay? So here um, we would have a tension force upward, okay, supporting that object, okay? And notice the tension force is along that rope um, supporting. So... Uh, that's the tension force. So any kind of rope, string, cord. Another example, let's say we have a box. This is a common example. Let's say we have a box and we're pulling that box with a rope. So here's a rope. So we're pulling that box with a rope. There is a tension force along that rope in the direction that we're pulling it. Okay. So that would be the tension it's supporting, it's pulling. You can think of pulling here. That tension force is pulling, it's supporting, and it's along that rope, string, chain, whatever. Okay, So that's tension force. The next one is probably the easiest one. It's the applied force, Okay, um, known as FA. This is probably the one that you remember from middle school and elementary. This is a push or a pull, okay? It's a contact force. There has to be physical contact between whatever's pushing on the object and the object, okay? So um, here, an example would be, let's say um, we have a desk. There's my desk, okay? and we are pushing that desk across the floor. Here's the floor. Okay, so that would be an applied force here. 
So we're applying a force onto the desk or onto the chair. That would be a push or a pull. Um, so that's the applied force. That's probably the easiest one. But there has to be a person applying, pushing, or pulling on that object in order for that applied force to be present. All right, the next one, and this is the last contact force, is the frictional force or friction. This is FF or little f. So friction is a contact force that most of the time opposes the motion of the object. Most of the time, not always, most of the time opposes the motion, okay? Um, and this, we're going to focus on sliding friction. Sliding friction is when two objects, it could be an object in the floor, two objects slide across each other, and then there's that friction between the two surfaces. Um, you can also get into like air friction, like drag, when something is moving in air because air is made up of stuff, there's that drag or that friction. But we're mainly going to be focusing on sliding friction. So let's say you have a book um, sitting on the table and you push the book so you're applying a force to the right. These two surfaces here are going to slide against each other and there's going to be some friction. So the book is being pushed to the right and then you would have a frictional force to the left in the opposite direction of the motion in this case, but that's not always the case, okay? So friction occurs when two objects slide relative to one another, okay, or try to move relative to one another. And there's two types of friction, and we'll get into this later. There's actually what we call static friction, all right, and then there's kinetic friction. What we're going to be focusing on, well, both really, but static is like right before the object starts to move. So you're pushing and pushing and pushing, and static friction is what keeps it from moving, okay? Kinetic friction is when you're moving something across a surface, and there's that friction, okay, that opposition. So that's friction. Now we're going to talk about the field forces and the big one that we're going to look at is the gravitational force and we'll get to magnetic and electric forces later okay so I don't want to give this away too much because we're going to be looking at the gravitational force in lesson 3-2 and the difference between the gravitational force and the mass of an object um, but, but what you need to know is that here's the Earth, and so there's the Earth. All masses attract each other, okay? So all masses attract each other. There's this gravitational force between all masses. There's a gravitational force between this pen and this phone, okay, because they have mass. There's a gravitational force pulling them together. Now, is that force very large? No, because these are not very massive, okay, but there's a gravitational force between all masses. So let's say you're standing, and I know this is not drawn to scale, but you're standing on Earth, okay, there is this gravitational force pulling you towards the Earth because you and the Earth are attracted to one another gravitationally. Okay, we call this the gravitational force, the force of the earth pulling down on your mass, which is the amount of matter that you're made up of, okay? This gravitational force is a field force, okay? It is a field force. In other words, even if you were up here above the earth's surface, there would still be that gravitational force pulling you down towards the earth. All right, even if you were way up here, 
there's still that gravitational force pulling you towards the earth. And I probably drew that way too big. All right, there's the gravitational force, okay? Um, so it's a field force. There doesn't need to be physical contact between you and the earth for that gravitational force to exist, okay? All right, so now I want to discuss, and I know this is a long one, uh, free body diagrams. Free body diagrams. These are so important. I call them FBDs. If you can't draw a correct free body diagram for a situation, it's going to be really difficult to work through that problem or work through that question. Um, so a free body diagram is a vector diagram. Um, it looks at all the forces acting on that object, or let's say includes all forces acting on the object. We're going to focus on one object at a time. Okay, so our free body diagram is going to be for a single object. Single object. And we're going to draw the forces, which are vectors, so arrows. Draw forces, which are arrows, outward from the object in the direction of the force. And this will make more sense when I start drawing these, okay? Um, so let's say we have, um, let's say we have just a pencil um, sitting on the desk. Okay, so here's our desk, and then here is our pencil. I can draw pencils, so that's easy. Okay, there's our pencil there. So what I'm going to do to draw a free body diagram, now this pencil is at rest, okay? I'm going to draw a dot to represent that pencil's center mass, okay? Draw a dot to represent that pencil. And then we know that there's a gravitational force pulling that pencil down towards the earth, okay? You're always going to have a gravitational force in all of your free body diagrams, okay? Gravitational force pulling that pencil down. And then there's this surface, okay? So this is a surface here. And so then there is a normal force pushing up on that pencil. And notice the normal force is perpendicular to the surface, okay? So that would be the free body diagram for the pencil. Pretty simple. Now, let's say that I take um, my little finger here. All right, there's ah, my finger. And I'm going to push the pencil to the right. Okay, I'm going to push the pencil with my little finger to the right. So now there is an applied force, okay? And the applied force is in the direction of that push, all right? And then there's also, and I will say, Pencil's no longer at rest. There's also a frictional force, which is in the opposite direction that the object is moving. And it's because the pencil and the desk are sliding or trying to slide relative to one another. There's that frictional sliding force, okay? So that's the free body diagram. Notice that I drew arrows to represent those forces, which are vectors. I started at the center or at the dot at the center of that object and I drew the vectors outward, the arrows outward in the direction of the different forces. Um, and I looked at just one object. I didn't look at the table. I didn't look at my finger. I just looked at the pencil itself. Okay. And that's how you draw a free body diagram. Okay. So let's say, let's look at another one. Let's say we have, um, Okay, so we have a pig in this classroom. I don't know if you've noticed, but we actually have a pig that is hanging, there's my pig, from a string from the ceiling. So here's the ceiling right here. 
and this pig is hanging from the string, okay? So if I were to draw a free body diagram, I would draw a dot to represent the center of mass for my pig, all right? We know that there's a downward gravitational force. In other words, the earth is pulling that pig downward towards the earth, towards its surface. And then there's this string, right? And this string is supporting this pig's weight. So we're going to draw a tension force to represent the string, the force, the, the upward pull of the string on that pig supporting its weight. Okay, so that's another free body diagram. All right, so I want to look at one more thing very quickly because we'll get into this a little bit more detail later, but this is really important. There's two situations that we can have when we're dealing with forces. We can have a situation called equilibrium. And that is when the net force, okay, so this is net force, which is the sum of all the forces acting, the vector sum, vector sum of all the forces acting on the object. But that's when the net force is equal to zero, okay? If the net force is equal to zero, we are in equilibrium, and the object is either at rest or moving with a constant velocity. Okay. All right. There's another situation, which is obviously not equilibrium. Okay. So we have situations where we're not in equilibrium. In this case, the net force is not equal to zero. Okay. Not equal to zero. And when the net force is not equal to zero, in other words, there is a net force acting on the object, the object is going to accelerate, which means it's going to either speed up, slow down, or there's going to be a change in direction. Okay, so anytime there is a net force or Sometimes, and this may be familiar from middle school, this is called an unbalanced force. Anytime there is a net force or an unbalanced force, it's going to cause the object to accelerate. Accelerate, accelerate, okay? If the net force, or there's no unbalanced forces, if the net force is zero, no acceleration, no acceleration, which means the object is going to either stay at rest or continue moving with a constant velocity just kind of depending on what it's doing originally. So for example, with the pig hanging from the ceiling, this force, the tension force and the gravitational force are equal in magnitude. So if you add these vectors together, let's say this is positive three newtons and this is negative three newtons, notice that the net force here is equal to zero. Okay, which makes sense because what's the pig doing? It's not accelerating. It is at rest. Okay, um, and so you have to kind of think about that when you're drawing your free body diagrams because remember the length of the arrow represents the magnitude. If you go back up here to our pencil example, remember when our pencil was at rest? So here our pencil's at rest. Um, there's no applied force, there's no frictional force, whoops, there's just the pencil here, there's my pencil and the table. Okay, so here's my pencil. We've got the normal force and the gravitational force. Well, if my pencil is at rest, the normal force and the gravitational force are equal in magnitude, which means the length of this arrow should be equal to the length of this arrow. This, again, this is an equilibrium situation. The pencil's at rest, okay? A net or unbalanced force causes objects to accelerate, okay? If the object's at rest, it's not accelerating. If the object is moving with a constant velocity, it is not accelerating, 
Okay. So think about this when you do your free body stuff. Okay. And we'll talk more about it in more detail later.